find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, episode 98, we've done this. So close. The March to 100, just a couple weeks away. And we have a great, great show planned for that celebration. Uh, but it's a celebration every week. And with me, uh, my, my co-celebrant, uh, another guy that works in indie wrestling in some fashion. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, currently down in San Antonio, Texas. He is Eamon Payton at Eamon, please. Eamon 2, please, on the Twitters. Not Eamon, please. That's a, that's a much different account. You are Eamon, please. There. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just excited to be back. Always excited to come on here and talk about indie wrestling. And we are literally inches away from the show one today. So that's kind of crazy. Yes, and we got a couple guests with us here tonight. But first, I want to tell you, go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Check out this, the Indie Mayhem Show, in our 97 97- predecessor interviews every week we've had an interview and so much more including the regular wrestling mayhem show where we're talking about the perils and tribulations of what watching wwe raw is like these days and so much more even a little smoky mountain wrestling this week that got really interesting on episode 498 and of course all the articles by the great matt carlins mainstream matt out there and so much more um please subscribe to us on itunes youtube stitcher spreaker iheart radio all over the place audio and video formats whatever works for you share the show and you can support us uh kind of tangentially through uh, our patreon at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show for the main show there or just share it with your friends and also big thanks to basic sickness the pittsburgh original for our intro and outro music check them out basic sickness.com for free music yourself uh so excited to have this one on uh the, the, well first of all joining us uh because he's a guy that's seen him every month as well is wheels the sound guy over there at uh, uh renegade wrestling alliance in west newton pa joining me at hot wheels rwa how you doing oh i'm doing great sorg uh i'm really excited for this week's guest in odd ways i mean <laughs> i've seen this man as you said in the ring but i've seen a lot of his stuff on screen and he's very entertaining yes. and i can't wait to hear what he has to say to the wonderful indie crowd but with us our, our guest of honor tonight is the mempho mofo mark bravara uh joining us how you doing tonight sir doing great. How are you guys doing? Great, great, great. Uh, so you're definitely one we've seen in the Renegade Wrestling Alliance for a bit now. I want to get into a little bit about what the MoFo is about, but first, I want to find out how did the MoFo get into pro wrestling? What was your first memory, uh, uh kind of coming up of being introduced to, or or just a great memory from your childhood of, of, of pro wrestling? Well, actually, the first memory I have in life is pro wrestling. Nice. Um, <laughs> I was at my grandfather's house, my mom's dad, and he is an immigrant from Italy and barely spoke any English. And it was me and him and my dad, and I was on the floor coloring a Dukes of Hazard coloring book. And my dad and my granddad were trying to figure out what they could both watch because my dad didn't speak any Italian and my granddad didn't speak any English. So they were flipping through the channels and it landed on wrestling. And they were both wrestling fans, so they left it on. And I looked up from my coloring book and saw the moon dogs fighting two guys that I don't remember who the heck they were. And I was transfixed. I thought it was the greatest thing I ever saw. And they had their match and they were fighting and going crazy. And my dad and my granddad weren't really paying attention. And the match ended with one moon dog trying to use the bone to hit a baby face. And the baby face moved and the moon dog hit the other moon dog with the bone. And there was blood everywhere. And the baby face is one. And they left the ring, and then the moon dogs started fighting each other, and they're biting each other on the forehead, and there's blood going everywhere, and I started screaming and crying until they turned it off. <laughs> and and uh, at that point, I guess I was under the my dad was under the impression that I was not going to like pro wrestling. And then uh, my next memory of wrestling is being at my dad's dad's house, and he was also a big wrestling fan, and he had he wanted to watch wrestling, and he was telling my dad about these. Um, these guys, my dad had stopped watching. And he was telling my dad about these big muscle guys who had been the tag team champions, and I would love them. And um, 
they were going to be on. There was some show that used to show like a match of the week that was like an old match. And he was like, these guys are going to be on the old match thing. And my dad said, oh, Mark doesn't like wrestling. He's not going to like it. But I didn't want my granddad to think I was a wuss. So I was like, no, I want to watch it. I want to watch it. And the classic match was uh, when Rocky Johnson and Tony Atlas won the tag team titles from the Samoans. And here I see these two muscle-bound guys flying around the ring, and I was a big superhero fan, so I just thought they were the greatest thing in the world. So I just thought that Rocky Johnson and Tony Atlas were the greatest, and they were, you know, superheroes come to life, and I had to see them, and I had to watch more. So from that day, I never stopped watching wrestling. I saw Hulk Hogan probably a few weeks later, and I was hooked, and I've been a fan ever since. That's awesome. That is one of the best uh, introduction stories I've heard. So, so how did you go from those early experiences um, to deciding I I can get into a ring, I can I can take a shot at this? And, and did you want to be a moon dog? Did I want to be a what? Did you want to be a moon dog? Oh God, no! <laughs> I, I have moon dog stories, but they're not at the beginning. Oh good. Um, I never thought it was possible to be a pro wrestler. It never crossed my mind. I never considered it. All my friends would say that I was going to be a pro wrestler, but I never thought it was a real thing. I mean, we used to, we had a big sectional couch in my basement and we used to set that up as a ring and we'd jump off of it and we'd tape shows. We had a video camera and we'd tape shows and we'd do promos in my basement and me and all my friends had wrestling characters, but I never thought that it was actually possible to be a pro wrestler. It never even crossed my mind. And then when I went to college, I heard that there was a, when we got the internet, I found out that there actually were wrestling schools and it was possible to become a wrestler, but I still didn't think it was possible. My dad's an attorney, my mom's a teacher. I figured, no, you know, being a wrestler, that's that's something other people do. That's not something I would do. I mean, I'd always played sports, I played football, I played soccer, I played basketball. Um, I played in, in college. Like I had always been an athlete, but it never occurred to me that I could be a pro wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um, until I was in college and started seeing these wrestling schools. Uh, but I didn't have enough time in college to go train, and I figured, you know, i got to finish college. Well, then I heard about the WWE school, the developmental in Memphis. And Memphis had always been my favorite territory. We started getting in, I grew up outside of D.C., and we had at least three or four hours of wrestling a day. We'd get the World class, Legend of World Class show, we get the AWA show, and then the two UHF stations had an hour of wrestling every day, and it was a different show every day. And wow. somehow we ended up getting an hour of Memphis. And to me, Memphis was the coolest of all the shows. It was just wild and crazy, and there was a million things going on. And it was my absolute favorite show. So when I was finishing college and getting ready to, you know, graduate, I didn't want to get a real job yet. I wanted to go to grad school. <laughs> So I started applying to grad schools, and just on a lark, I applied to the University of Memphis. Everywhere else I applied was, like, East Coast, up and down the East Coast, and just Memphis. I was like, ah, I'll just see what happens. And I never heard from them. And so I had gotten into every other school I wanted to go to, and I decided I was going to go to the University of Miami. And I was filling out an application for uh, student loans, and it was going to be literally, like, eighty to $90,000 in loans for me to go to grad school at Miami. And as I'm filling out this form, my phone rings, and I let it go to the answering machine. And I hear this voice come over the thing saying that it was a professor from the University of Memphis, and they were calling to offer me to say I was accepted to grad school and to offer me an assistantship, which meant they would pay my tuition and fees, and I'd get a stipend for working for them. Wow. So I jumped up, I ran, I literally dove over my couch grabbed the phone with one hand, landed on the floor, <laughs> threw it next to my ear and said, I'll take it. And I ended up going to the University of Memphis. And the first human being I called when I got there was uh, Buddy Wayne, who if you know Memphis, he was one of the office guys there forever. He's Ken Wayne, Nightmare Ken Wayne's dad. And he was in charge of the school. But they wanted, I want to say $2,500, which I did not have. So I started... Um, giving blood twice a week because back then they didn't cross-reference the private and the public um, databases. Oh, wow. So you could do that. Now you can't do that. 
Yeah. So you can only you're only good blood once a week. <laughs> so back then I was giving it twice a week. And, and I want to point out that now, this is this is giving blood. Now I've I've done I did the plasma thing twice a week when I was in college uh, here in Pittsburgh. And so you were actually giving blood, not like a plasma. They put it back in you kind of thing, right? No, I was giving blood twice a week. Did you at least get and a cookie? Did, <laughs> did you at least get a cookie every time? <laughs> uh, they gave you like apple juice, I think. Oh, I think good. It was apple juice. Oh, good. Oh, good. They didn't give you anything for plasma. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I was doing that, and at the same time, um, Memphis as a developmental territory was kind of wrapping up. Mm-hmm. Like they were getting ready to move them out of there and send everybody up to Cincinnati. Uh, but I worked out at the same gym as all the developmental guys, and I got to meet a lot of them. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Steve Bradley, but he was basically the top guy in the territory then. And somehow he never ended up on WWE, but he was amazing. And I had been getting the Power Pro and the Memphis TV on tapes when I was back in D.C. And I just thought he was awesome. And so the first time he walks into the gym in Memphis, I was just starstruck and completely afraid to talk to him. And then one day he just walks up to me. Well, I'm bench pressing, and I used to cut really crazy designs into my facial hair. And he looks down at me, and he says, that's the stupidest facial hair I've ever seen, and I'm a wrestler. <laughs> so I finished my set, and I'm like, I know, I know who you are. I was such a mark. I was just losing. Like, I couldn't talk to him. And he just ended up being, like, a friend. Like, we work out together. I'd see him out. He was just a really cool guy, and he just took a liking to me for some reason. Mm-hmm. And then when they finally moved them off to – um, Cincinnati, the last day we were there, um, everybody was leaving, and he grabbed me as I was walking away. He's like, I need to talk to you. And he pulled me aside, and he says, when are you going to ask me about being a wrestler? And I was like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, shut, shut up. You know, if obviously you want to be a wrestler. When are you going to ask me about how to do it? I was like, I don't know. I just didn't really think it was something I could do. And he's like, if I can do it, you can do it. And if the next time I see you, you haven't going to wrestling school, I'm going to kick your ass. Hmm. So he gave me a couple of contact numbers for different people that were running schools in the area, and he moved to Cincinnati probably the next day or two days later. So I looked online and looked around to see who was running schools, and this one guy was the first person to return my call, and he was a goof and had no idea what he was doing. I knew as soon as I walked in and watched what they were doing, I was like, I don't want any part of this. So then I called the second guy who responded, and he was a guy named Tony Myers, who had been a enhancement guy on USWA forever. And I had to meet him at Danny Dunn's transmission shop. And if you know a lot about Memphis, Danny Dunn is one of uh, Laura's best friends. He was one of his best man in one of his weddings. But he owns a transmission shop up on Summer Avenue, and they had turned the showroom into a almost a studio because Danny's son, Adam, wanted to be a wrestling television producer. So his dad turned the studio in, or turned the showroom into like a wrestling studio. It had a ring, it had cameras, it had a little control room. So I met Tony up there and he gave me my first day of training. And Tony trained me for about a month. And I had to go, I had to get there early because I had to set up the ring. And I was the only one there. So I set up the ring by myself. And Tony would beat me up for a while. Then some other people would roll in and out. And eventually a guy named Johnny Dotson came. And Johnny kind of picked up the more bumping and athleticism part of teaching me how to work. And then after about six weeks, Tony got into some trouble and he couldn't train me anymore. So he kind of filtered out and Johnny was handling things. And then after two months, Danny decided he was going to convert the showroom of the transmission shop into some more... Uh, work base. So we got kicked out. So we had nowhere to train. <laughs> so Tony started taking me out to uh, Don Bass's ring. And it's a ring in the loosest sense of the word. Uh, Don Bass was one of the assassins in Memphis. Basically, if you ever see anybody in the 80s under a hood, it's probably Don. <laughs> and he lived in Jericho, Arkansas, which is the middle of nowhere, in a trailer. But he had a barn out back with like a tin shack, and in there was a ring. The ring consisted of four wooden posts with string around them, a concrete floor with three layers of carpet on top of it. And that was the ring. So if you can imagine doing wrestling training 
on a concrete floor with three layers of carpet on top of it oh. in a tin shack in Memphis, Tennessee in the summer, it probably wasn't the most enjoyable experience. So when people complain about having to go train in a nice air-conditioned space in a nice spring, I really don't have any patience for them because of where I started training. So from there, um, Johnny basically said to me, hey, kid, uh, wherever I get booked, you get booked, but you have to drive. So from then on, for at least three days a week, sometimes four, sometimes five days a week, I'd leave work, I'd pick up Johnny, we'd drive somewhere, wrestle, and I'd drive back. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, we were booked at least Saturday night, often Saturday day, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, uh, driving anywhere you can imagine in the Deep South. Then Johnny sort of got himself into some trouble. He couldn't travel anymore, but I had already gotten into a bunch of places, so I was still traveling a lot. And after a year, I ended up in what at the time was the best indie in the area. It was outside of Dyersburg, and it was run by a guy named Derek King. He used to be in developmental. Um, he was on that Wrestling with Death show. Mm. The, when they did the wrestling and the mortuary. Yeah. He took a liking to me and started booking me in Dyersburg. So I was wrestling in Dyersburg uh, every Saturday, Arkansas on Friday, another show in Gibson, Tennessee on Sunday. And then uh, I realized that I sucked and I was really, really bad. <laughs> um, so I asked them if there was anybody up there who would train people. And a guy named Motley Cruz who, if you've ever seen the Jumpin' Jeff Farmer Yep promo, the worst <laughs> promo ever, you guys ever seen that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the guy he's cutting that promo on is Motley Cruz, who was one of my trainers. So Motley and his then wife, Tasha, and Derek started training me on Sunday afternoons with a couple of other guys. And that's really where I learned how to work. Like Motley and Tasha and Derek were just taskmasters and <laughs> we just tear you down and beat you up. And Motley and Tasha came from like the oldest of old schools. Like Motley worked in the territories. So they knew all the hooks. If <laughs> they would like if you've ever seen Beyond the Mat, the parts where Stu Hart is putting guys in those old shoot holds, <laughs> that's yeah. what they would do. <laughs> they would put me in all kinds of shoot holds just so I would know what they felt like. Uh, they beat me up and beat me up, and really that's where I kind of learned my craft craft a lot, was having them beat me up every Sunday, and then Dyersburg heated up to the point that every Saturday was Dyersburg, and we were doing TV. Uh, so we would take TV Tuesday nights at a bar in Dyersburg, and then Thursday night we were at another bar uh, in another town. I can't remember what town another town in the area. Friday night, we were in Arkansas. Saturday, we were in Dyersburg. Sunday, we would be in Gibson or some other town. So basically, we were running at least four shows a week, sometimes five, sometimes six. And you can't help but really get better and kind of learn what you're doing if you're working five and six nights a week. And you've got people like Ken Wayne and Motley Cruz. And then Bill Dundee at first was the booker in the area. So I learned a lot of what I know about booking from Bill. And um, the golden boy, Greg Anthony, who's another amazing talent from that area. They just had a lot of guys who really knew. And every card you went to, there'd be someone who had been around. Like Tommy Rogers was in the area at the time. There were lots and lots of veterans of the territories that you can learn from. And you're working five and six nights a week. So you'd have to almost try not to get better at that point. Mm -hmm. So that's where uh, I think I started picking up wrestling and getting better at wrestling was getting to work that often and getting to be around that many good guys. And it sounds like, I mean, I, so I, yeah, I, 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 I good to hear, but you got it anyway. Yeah. And it sounds like, 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 you know, you're, you're talking about how much you were working around that time. Like, I don't know anybody, even as you know, it feels like we have far too many promotions here in the Pittsburgh area, but I don't know anybody that runs that much. You know what I mean? Uh, to any success, so, so so Memphis is still a, a pretty heavy hotbed for wrestling, even though it's not you know Jerry Lawler days or anything like that, right? Oh, I mean, the draw were was not that much different than most indies at the time, but right. they were we were just really lucky because we hit at a moment right after uh, Memphis came back on TV, like Memphis Wrestling TV came on, and they were doing good ratings. 
So a couple other stations. Uh, there's a TV market in Jackson, which is about 90 minutes north of Memphis. And there's a TV market in Jonesboro, Arkansas, which is uh, probably about 90 minutes the other way into Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And they both had the Memphis Wrestling TV and were doing good ratings, so they wanted more. So they were putting the TV that we were doing on. And that just grew and grew as a draw. I mean, TV in a decent time slot in the South is going to do ratings and it's going to help you draw. It's just, it's really hard to get on TV. And right. It's just got such a tradition in that area and that market that it really does well. So if you're able to get talent over and have decent talent in that area and have TV, you'll probably do well. So we just kind of hit at the right time. Right. And that seems like yeah, a rare, that seems like a rarity yeah. in, in other areas. Like I can't like the, the TV that I know, like in this area, I'm pretty sure is bought time that I'm aware of. And, and I don't know too much more. That's any different. So that's, that's really something cool and special that's happening there. Um, so, so, uh, you know, you go from there, I, I, I you know, I got to talk about, you know, I, I, I talked to you briefly at RWA about this. Um, I always like when, when, uh, guys are being creative and putting themselves out there. And, um, this concept that really caught my eye, uh, for you was this, uh, mofo show you have going on on YouTube. Can you, can you talk about uh, how you kind of got into doing, uh, th this thing? Uh, well, I went to graduate school. I went to film school. Mm-hmm. So I've been a video, TV, movie producer for a long time now. I've produced feature films. I've produced TV shows. I run my own video production and multimedia company now. Nice. Uh, it's always been, it's been an interest of mine since high school. I used to make movies for school projects on a VHS camera and two VCRs. I mean, I've been into that sort of thing forever. Um, Years ago, I got to be a part of uh, Team Taz, which was Taz's sort of training nice. program. And one of the things he really liked about me was my promos and creativity and that I had a brand and I made sure everything stayed on brand and pushed my brand. And one of the things he had kind of encouraged me to do was find a way to create more content to get my name out there. And I've always liked I've always been a promo guy. I've always been a, even when I was a fan, I like the promos even more than I like the matches. So I've always been somebody that puts out a lot of promos. And I was trying to think of a way that I could do promos and make them a little bit more interesting. Because I would watch a lot of the stuff you would see on YouTube. I watched The Young Turks, and I used to watch Equals 3, and a lot of the other shows that people would do that would gain a lot of popularity. And I was trying to think of a way to do that in a wrestling context. And I don't remember what the first show was. I haven't done that many of them, maybe like 20. But whatever the first show was, I just had an idea that I needed to have some graphical support for. So I thought, ah, what can I, how can I do this and make this interesting? And that's where the idea of the MoFo show came from. And I wish I had more time to do more of them. It's just with running my own business and wrestling as much as I do, it's tough to get more than one of them done a month. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's fun, and it gives me a different way to smack talk people and do something interesting and combine my creativity with my ability to cut a promo and my ability to really anger people and push their buttons. So I love doing the MoFo show. It's one of my favorite things that I uh, get to do in wrestling. Awesome. Awesome. And, and, I, and I was sharing with you a little bit beforehand. Uh, you, you did this music video uh, with uh, uh, Jesse Bell Smothers and uh, uh, Shane Andrews involved. That is uh, very creepy when I Chromecast it to my TV. Creepy. It's a love song. <laughs> yeah, it's a love song, but uh, uh, there's beautiful. it's beautiful. And I don't know if you guys are on video, uh, you can catch a little bit of this. By the way, great, great singing chops, by the way. Oh, man. The Mofo has an incredible voice. You may not know this, but the Mofo has won the voice competition in five different countries. <laughs> and uh, there's a little bit of uh, the interesting... Uh, face work, I guess I can say, uh, towards the end of your video here. <laughs> um, well, so. I mean, that, I, hey, those were hard shots to get. It was raining. Uh huh. I mean, it was a production nightmare, you know, but I just kind of had to put Shane in his place. He was being troublesome. He was getting in the way of me and my sweet JB and just had to show him, you know, that I'm the mofo. <laughs> and Jesse Bell should let me be her mofo, baby. <laughs> Um, so we've, we've seen you, like I said, up here in the Pittsburgh area, 
uh, with uh, our, our WA. And I, one thing I like about the group is we do get people from different areas. I know, I know, we get a lot of people from I, I think the Carolinas and of course uh, out your way in Memphis. Um, um, and I definitely find that it's the most interesting crowd I know I get to work around uh, on my side of things. Um, uh, what, what, what's your take on the group uh, these days? On the RWA or on the RWA fan? Uh, yes. <laughs> Both? Yes. <laughs> well, obviously the best thing to ever happen to the RWA is the fold. Mm -hmm. Because the fold has been dominating RWA. It changed the pace of RWA. It changed everything about RWA. For so long, RWA was about Ryan Mitchell and Chris Taylor. They had been on top, running things in the RWA forever. And, you know, personally, the mofo thing, so that that sort of thing eventually gets old, and you got to run the old, tired talent out of the way. Not saying they weren't great professional wrestlers, because they were. But, you know, there needed to be a change. There needed to be something new. And so Q-Ball Carmichael came in, and he started that change. And then the Mofo came in, and Jimmy Cicero came in, and Forbidden Warriors came in, and Jack Cicero came in. And, you know, exactly what we said would happen would happen. We said we would take over. We said we'd win all the gold. We said we'd beat up everybody who got in our way. And that's exactly what's happened. And no matter what Dr. Fieldbat has done, no matter what obstacle he's put in our way, no matter how often he's tried to break, batter, and shirk the rules, the fold has come out on top. And, you know, we've been dominant since we've been in RWA. And personally, the Mogo thinks that it's just going to stay that way. We've got a big 10-man tag coming up on Saturday. The Fold taking on the Bad Boys Club and their partners, and that's going to be a big match. It's going to be a big deal, but in the end, we all know what's going to happen. We know the Fold is going to end up victorious because we're just better than everybody that the RWA can throw at us. And then in January, the big anniversary show, the biggest event of the year for the RWA, and it's pretty obvious to everybody involved that at the anniversary show, the biggest show of the year for the RWA, the fold is going to end up on top again. Jimmy Cicero is going to beat Nick Estevan Taylor to retain the heavyweight title. The Forbidden Warriors are going to beat Wild West to keep the tag team titles. Sarah Dox will still be the women's champion. And most importantly, the mofo finally gets what he wants. You know, other people have been saying, this is what Shane Andrews wants. Shane Andrews claims that he's the one that wants to street fight with the mofo, that he wants to fight the mofo without any rules. But if you remember, last month, the mofo beat Shane Andrews clean in the middle of the ring. No interference, no objects, no nothing, just clean in the middle of the ring. Now, if you give the mofo objects, if you give the mofo no disqualification, it's pretty obvious the mofo is going to be the one that beats Shane Andrews. You know, the mofo almost is willing to guarantee it that he will be the one to beat Shane Andrews. So this Saturday, the fold is going to reign supreme. In January, the fold is going to reign supreme. And all these fans of the RWA who send the mofo these hate messages, these awful, horrible, disgusting hate messages, threatening to injure the mofo, threatening to harm the mofo, threatening to even kill the mofo. You know, those are horrible things that people are saying the mofo, when in fact he should be the most loved man in the RWA. Because what you can't say about the mofo is that he's a liar. Everything the Mofo has ever said since coming to RWA has been 100% true and 100% fact. Everything the Mofo said is going to happen has happened. Everything he said he was going to do, he's done. Now, to the Mofo, that seems like the kind of attribute that should be loved by these fans. But for some reason, they haven't gotten on the Mofo bandwagon yet. And he thinks that after the fold beats their opponents from the RWA this Saturday... In West Newton, and after we reign supreme at the anniversary event in January, the fans of the RWA are going to realize their mistake. They're going to realize the greatness of the Mofo in the fold, and they're going to be in our corners. They're going to be buying our t shirts, they're going to be buying our action figures, they're going to be buying all of our merchandise, and they're going to realize. That's the best thing to happen to the RWA, the best thing to happen to West Newton, the best thing to happen in their lives, the best thing to happen, frankly, to the, Pen the state of Pennsylvania is the fold. So when you ask the local, what did you think about the RWA? What do you think about the RWA fans? That's really it. Okay. Huh. Wow. So Lord, I'm sorry. I had to interrupt this. After listening to him jabber on and on and on, I mean, <laughs> yes, I may be the lonely sound guy that may play that, god-awful music that i have to play for him 
that causes him to like make everybody gyrate. I don't know, Mofo, if you've noticed, but there are some fans that are actually dancing to your crap. I mean, I don't know what's getting in their head. So I'm, I'm, I'm dancing to it. I'll be honest. I with that because, frankly, not only did the Mofo win the voice competition in five countries, he also won Dancing with the Stars in 12 additional countries. And the Mofo doesn't appreciate it when people who cannot dance begin to dance to his music. He doesn't appreciate their gyrating. He doesn't appreciate their motions. It kind of looks as if they're having a seizure. And, you know, the Mofo feels sometimes like he might need to call an ambulance to help them. And that's just not the sort of thing that the Mofo needs on his mind before entering the ring for competition. So the Mofo would like to encourage all the people in the RWA, not only should you watch the Mofo's video on personal hygiene, not only should you watch that for some tips so when the Mofo walks out the curtain, he doesn't smell you, he would also encourage you not to dance to his music because that song isn't for them. It's not for them. The song is for the Mofo. The song is for the members of the fold when they come to the ring with the Mofo. You know, the Mofo is an incredible dancer. Like you said, he was the 12-time champion of Dancing with the Stars in various countries around the world. And when he comes to the ring, the dance that he does is his gift to those people because they are getting to see a Dancing with the Stars champion. And that's something they're not going to see very often. So when he's giving that gift, he would like them to show him the respect of accepting his gift and not apparently attempting to dance along with the Mofo's music because that song is not for them. And when they dance, frankly, it scares the Mofo, it scares small children, it scares Alexa, it scares everybody in the fold because there's some bad things going on when those people are dancing. It looks disgusting, it looks disturbing, it looks horrible, and the Mofo would prefer not to see it. Well, I mean, I kind of agree with what you say in a weird way, but aren't you the one that just said you want the fans to start liking the fold? So isn't that one way no, to start no, 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 Go back, play the tape back. You'll hear the one who did not want to say he wants to be liked. He couldn't care less if he's liked. Who cares if he's liked? He still gets paid. He's still on top. He still beats the person that gets in the ring with him. I don't care if they cheer me or if they boo me. I said that they would probably realize that they should be cheering for me just because I'm so great. I don't care if they do or not. It doesn't matter to me. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a little backtracking to me. I mean, <laughs> but uh, I mean, that was my only question. Sorghum, go ahead and ask him some more questions. I mean, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Um, what are you? Uh, well, let's let's, let's uh, uh, close this up. Well, first of all. Um, what are you watching these days? What are you kind of uh, uh, checking out these days, or what's catching your attention to kind of keep up on what's going on out there? Well, I was just watching the University of North Carolina and the University of Maryland basketball game, <laughs> and that was quite good. And before that, I was watching the University of Virginia against Ohio State University, and that was a pretty decent game as well. Once college basketball season picks up, I watch a lot of college basketball. <laughs> uh, when it comes to wrestling, uh, I watch old stuff. Yeah. Movo has not watched WWE all year. Mm-hmm. He does not plan to. Uh, he hasn't watched TNA in quite some time. Uh, it's on the channel that's way up in the dial, so Movo doesn't typically get to that. Uh, he does watch Ring of Honor every week because he has a lot of fan, uh, friends there who he likes seeing on TV. But when it comes to modern stuff, there's not a lot of stuff currently that the Mofo watches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, he usually will get into a wrestler and start watching as many of his matches as he can. He was into Ron Garvin last month. Highly recommend Ron Garvin and Tully Blanchard matches and Ron Garvin and Kirk Henning matches. Yes. Before that, it was Jerry Stubbs, Mr. Olympia, and watched tons of his matches. Before that, it was the Dream Machine, Troy Graham. So typically, I'll just start watching a series of old matches. Also got into the old... Uh, this Week in Wrestling Show with Joe Petticino and Gordon Soley, and I've been trying to watch those from beginning to end. Those are fun because it's uh, nothing but different territories every segment. You see a lot nice. of different guys. Nice. Saw some stuff from Polynesian pro wrestling that I'd never seen before. Um, we, we actually were just talking on Wrestling Mayhem Show tonight before this about uh, WWE Network is just adding, start, starting to add some uh, AWA Smoky Mountain and like uh, NWA WCW era stuff. Um, anything from there? It sounds like you're the person to ask that that we should look out for from those eras. Um, everything in Smoky Mountain is great. Mm-hmm. The best thing about Smoky Mountain, and it's the thing that I miss most of all in wrestling. I think I miss I miss two things in wrestling. I mean, I miss week to week storytelling, mm-hmm. and I miss the big match. And that's two things that you get in Smoky Mountain. They would build up 
like big events like Fire on the Mountain and Thanksgiving Thunder and Super Bowl of Wrestling. And so you would really get kind of building of momentum to those events. And you got the week-to-week developments over the course of time that were really entertaining. So you're not going to go wrong watching anything in Smoky Mountain. The entire feud with Cornette and Bullet Bob was amazing. Uh, the development of the Tracy Smothers and Dirty White Boy feud with uh, Ron Wright is pretty awesome, uh, building up to when Ron Wright stood up out of his wheelchair. Uh, when Dirty White Boy t- turns and Tracy Smothers won't accept him as a good guy, like all that storytelling is amazing. So anything in Smoky Mountain, I think, is just a fun watch. You're not going to get um, tons of the you know the four or five star matches, lots of crazy moves. That's not what you're going to see. But if you're into promos and week to week storytelling, you're going to see great stuff on Smoky Mountain because you got Cornette, you've got Bullet Bob, you've got Dutch Mantel, you've got Arn Anderson sometimes. Straight promos. That'll be uh, really impressive stuff. Uh, when you go back to the WCW uh, 605 shows, I think probably they pick up. I think I heard they start in like 84, 85. Mm-hmm. And that's the beginning of Horseman. That's leading into Starcade 2. Um, there's just some great little bits of story development and angle development in there. It's just amazing. Like the stuff leading into mm-hmm. Flair turning on Dusty Rhodes in the cage when Flair was wrestling Nikita and Flair wins and the Russians are beating him up and Dusty runs out to make the save and the horsemen come in, they beat up Dusty and break his leg. If you watch the stuff leading up to that, there's a bit with, uh, I think it's a week before or two weeks before the Russians attack Rick Flair and Dusty makes a save for him and Flair's angry at him and tells him to stay out of his business. And just that little bit leading up to the actual Attacking the cage really helps out. And again, it's the same thing. It's the, it's the week-to-week storytelling. It's the promos that, to me, really make those shows stand out over today's TV. Because nice. uh, that's the stuff that I really that I really miss. I remember there's a uh, Manny Fernandez and Buddy Landell match from around that time. It's in some sort of tournament or championship series or something like that. And it's... It's fabulous old school wrestling. It's fabulous storytelling within I think it's a twenty minute draw. It's the main event on one of those shows and it's great stuff. So if you can find that one in there, definitely watch that one. Um we really can't go wrong in that whole area. Because for me, as someone who's not as much of a match guy and is more of a story and moment and promo guy, that's the stuff that I enjoy more than anything else. Good, good, good. Um, so tell me what is kind of the last question to, that we like to ask everybody. You can take this however you want. Uh, what is the best and worst thing about doing indie wrestling? Um, the best thing is making moments. Um, to me, that's my favorite thing about wrestling mm-hmm. is when something happens and you do something that people are going to remember. And I don't mean that as you did you know, a moonsault off of something. I mean that as you've built up to a match or a moment or a move or a promo and you deliver it in a way that either makes people scream and yell and cheer or sucks the wind out of the room or makes people cry or makes people hit the ring on you. Mm -hmm. When you just move someone's emotions to a point that they can't contain them. That's the best thing about indie wrestling and pro wrestling and, in my mind. And the worst thing about indie wrestling is the drive home. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's, that's a, the, the high is worn, right? I mean, that, that's got to be tough. Say what? Yeah, like the high from the evening is, is, is down on that point, right? Uh, it's not so much of that as much as you've done this extremely physical thing and mm. you're still in, you're worn out, and instead of being able to cool down properly, you're getting in a car for four to six to eight to ten hours and riding in a car in an uncomfortable seated position. And then when you get out of the car, your body is very angry with you. <laughs> it does not approve of you having spent the previous four to eight hours in a seated position mm-hmm. while driving your car. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. The Memfo Mofo, you are a lot of places. Uh, as so we're, we're seeing on your car, if you guys are on video, where can people find you? Um, well, you can find the Mofo on Twitter at Memfo Mofo. You can find the Mofo's website, www.memfomofo.com. 
You can find the Mofo on Facebook at facebook.com slash memfomofo. You can find him on Instagram at memfomofo. Uh, if you're looking to see the Mofo in person this Friday, he will be in Kinston, North Carolina, defending his UWC heavyweight championship against Brandon Day, a man who once put 36 stitches in the Mofo's head with a forearm. So the Mofo might want to give a few of those stitches back to Mr. Brandon Day. And then this Saturday in West Newton, Pennsylvania, for the RWA, you can see the Mofo in the fold. Taking on the best of the RWA in a 10-man tag team match, all leading up to the big anniversary event in January for the RWA, where the Mofo will finally get to beat up Shane Andrews with no rules, no regulations, in a street fight, and put the bad boy in his place. There you go. Go check it out. And uh, plenty of videos. You can check a sample a little bit of Memfo Mofo in our RWA at the YouTube. Uh, RWA Pro is the channel over there. Uh, a lot, of, And I think I have your first match up here, actually, in full, so that people can check out as well uh, with the RWA. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I just I just discovered you have a Tumblr uh, as well as we were talking here, so I, I'm, I'm poking at that too. Um, not not too many people blog promos. That's that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Every so often, the mofo will do that. Awesome. Uh, go check out. Thanks a lot. We're going to check out what's going on uh, this past week in Sorgatron Media Podcast Universe, and we'll be right back. Talk a little bit more indie wrestling with the wheels and the E. Sawtooth got business to attend to. Welcome to the future and skipping about 10 years of technology. You didn't even have to go through the, the Palm Trio days no, or no the Blackberry Trio. days. You didn't even have to go through the days where we didn't have cut and paste on iOS. <laughs> You're playing a professional, right, yeah, who's yeah. playing the wrestling character. So those yeah. two layers exist in the game. The reward systems in the game are all about, like, you can get more cool stuff for your character. You can raise your stats. You can get new moves. Uh, you can get a valet. You can maybe gain more booking authority, change your gimmick, all that kind of stuff. Going on ads in wrestling, I think the uh, the greatest one I've ever seen is the King of the Ring 1998 promo package where it's like Hell in the Cell with Taker and, and Mankind. And it was like First Blood with Austin and Kane. And then it just goes into Super Soaker. It brings you. <laughs> <laughs> Super Soaker of Blood. Get it belong to me now. <laughs> ha! Turn the camera off! And we're back. Thank you so much for the Memfo Mofo. And, uh, of course, uh, check out uh, everything that happened last week, as you just saw, at SorgatronMedia.com. We got on the line. Like I said, it's uh, Amen 2, please, is uh, uh, with us still, as well as Hot Wheels leading the way to RWALive.com and uh, the show this Saturday. Um, and uh, we heard a good bit from the Memfo about what is going on in RWA, but uh, a lot of other great stuff. A big tag team match, Ashton Amherst and Shane Douglas taking on Ryan Rain and a mystery uh, partner. Uh, Amazing Red against Gory, the cruiserweight champion down there. Uh, again, Amazing Red had a great match last month with Flip Kendrick. The three ways, uh, they, the two of them and um, uh, Sanjay Dutt had a, 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 a tremendous Sanjay Dutt returning against a mystery opponent that we may or may not know who that is. Um, and uh, But either way, it sounds like it's going to be somebody new. So very excited about that. Great wrestling happening in this uh, uh, shady gymnasium in West Newton, PA. But hey, you know, there was a bingo hall in Philadelphia that made a lot of noise several years ago. So you never know, right? Um, so, I mean, I, I think yep. as, again, as I always say, got a great thing going there. Um, I, I said this to somebody, uh, yesterday and I, I mean, it like with, with, with all, with like, truly, I believe this, I, I think, you know, I can only work with so many promotions at a time. And I think I picked the two best ones in the area. Like I feel that, or I wouldn't be there with you guys. Uh, so I think it's really cool. It doesn't help wheel, you know, wheel wheels is there too, to do that funny dance every time that makes me smile too. So. <laughs> hey, I try to Sorg. I mean, hey, we got to entertain ourselves when we're not doing anything. So hey, we got to hey. just do something. Well, silly. back in the day, we really had to entertain ourselves because Arda Bay was kind of iffy a few years ago. <laughs> to be quite well, honest, honestly, I have to say, yeah, we were. Like we there were was points iffy, where I'm I like, mean, "What in the world am I doing here?" <laughs> yeah, and I must say, I mean, as much as I don't like the man, but. The fold and all the new talent that we have and the great crowd that follows us so well, it has picked up a hundred and twenty percent. 
It's so, great stuff. It's I good. mean, it's RWA good. has become really a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It has. It has. Um, but anyway, so there's that, that going on. Uh, so check out rwalive.com to find out everything going on around that. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else uh, offering in the area with as many promotions. There probably is. Um, actually, I think mostly everybody's spread out. I know uh, Code Red and, and uh, IWC are the next two weeks, for instance. Um, not that I'm going to mention much about Code Red because, uh, like I said, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this recently, but I have a, I have a pretty uh, a big policy on we don't talk a lot about indies that you can't access to. Uh, and what I mean by that is they have DVDs, they have a lot of stuff on YouTube. Can you, as a fan that's you know not in Pittsburgh, not in Austin, Texas, do you have access to what they're doing? Um, because uh, to be quite honest, you know this isn't going to put butts in seats. Um, a lot of you guys listening, maybe you're from the Pittsburgh area, you'll go down there Saturday. But uh, or maybe you're from the Pittsburgh area and you're definitely not going to Inspire Wrestling in Austin, Texas. You know what I mean? Um, so that's that's a big caveat for me. When we talk about guys on here, uh, at least at length. Um, so, so when you guys are uh, recommending uh, anybody else for the check out, make sure we can check it out if we're not in St. Louis or Wisconsin or wherever the heck you might be. I think it's a really big qualification. Uh, I try to hold to, um, or even farther across, like Pennsylvania, even. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Take that, Erie. Um, <laughs> for instance, um, I was thinking more like toward uh, like Harrisburg area, but okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is there wrestling in Harrisburg? Really? Like I don't hear about We're it that way. Yeah. I really don't hear about it. Jersey has way too like a lot of wrestling, but that's Jersey. I think they can sustain it. But I, I've looked at a list and I was actually surprised how many like companies are in PA. Well, that makes sense. But I bet both. You know. They, I think it's interesting because you know, Eamon, you you have your guys coming on. I'm I'm always fascinated hearing about like kind of the state of Texas wrestling. I know we've talked about it over yeah. the years and kind of seen that develop as you used to bring us you know the old uh, what was it River City Wrestling and Anarchy Championship Wrestling, yeah. which were I thought very unique in their own ways and and very interesting and and and, and there's definitely um, you know for as big a state as it is, it doesn't feel like promotions are right on top of each other as it feels like in Pennsylvania in general. But we also have Jersey and New York, and there's just, like, you know, that kind of Northeast hotbed thing happening in general, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we've had detail in the past, I think, but, I mean, size of the state also, I think, plays in that fact. But I think, yeah, I mean, uh, it seems, you know, PA is definitely a much smaller area, and Pittsburgh in particular, um, you know, the amount of, of promotions there. Yeah, it seems... Yeah. It just all depends on, on area, I feel. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly. Um, so, and speak of one accessible, there is, if you are in a Pittsburgh area and you're in McKeesport, uh, there is PWX. Uh, PWXTV.com has No Limit is their show. No Limits, I'm sorry, is their show this weekend. And they do have uh, their TV show uh, online as well, so you can uh, check out what they're doing. <laughs> Wheels, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wheels. So I have this up here, and I want to just notice uh, in the back, I can't zoom in here, but there's a nice RWA shirt right in the background on PWX TV in the main camera. Oh my, yeah, I I, kind of noticed that earlier when I was watching, checking out their site, and well, who, see, I mean, I mean, I don't know, Sword, you've probably paid attention more than I have, but Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't really seen any other promotions, uh, shirts in our crowd, so. No, no, definitely not. Unless it's Um, like WWE. Or like gory shirts from venues in IWC, you know what I mean? I mean, that, that, no, yeah. that, I don't. I I'm very, you know, as much as they're, you know, people, you know, the promoters and anybody else and fans, you know, talking or the wrestlers talking about how there's too many promotions, the fans are the fans are being split up. Mm. Not, I don't, I don't think so. You know, I do I mean, not see. Uh, yeah. I I mean, I see, I see some that follow wrestlers. Some, mm-hmm. not a lot. Yeah, but I'm not seeing like really a lot of impact. You know, I mean, when you guys go head to head right up the road from IWC or PWX, do you really see a, a bunch of faces that aren't there? You know, I, I mean, I, I think some of your your record setting numbers you guys had over summer were directly against like like PWX. You know, uh, up in yeah, the so between PWX and even TNA. I mean. Come on, we outdrew TNA. I mean, I'm not boasting about that. Okay, yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. We outdrew them. And, but those had 
that that had TV stars up there mm-hmm. up against us. And and Amon, I so. mean, I mean, Amon, I don't know if you have that kind of that like you you're in a different. You say how Austin, Texas, is more like an event oriented town, not necessarily mm-hmm. necessarily a wrestling oriented town. So I mean, you really your competition is a little wider then. Yeah, we we compete against we compete against a lot of music and a lot of just general, uh, like like you said, just general events as opposed to pro wrestling. I mean, Austin. There's I mean, there's WWE and there's stuff like that, but like it's not Austin in particular is not considered necessarily to be like the wrestling hotbed. Um, uh, you know, that would be more like a Dallas area or something like that, where you know the whole, the whole history of like Texas wrestling was kind of more prominent. Mm-hmm. We're getting a little feedback in the chat room about following around promotions, but but uh, so Traegar in the chat room, who I was actually planning already to to, to plug this um, breaking tray fed. Breaking is his blog, and he gives great recaps and reviews uh, and, and previews, actually, uh, of both RWA and IWC and, and other stuff that he's into in, in indie wrestling, pro wrestling. So I want to give a shout out there uh, to that. Uh, but he's saying, uh, yeah, I just follow what I can drive to in, in a reasonable amount of time, but I would follow Raylan anywhere, be still my heart. <laughs> So there you go. Of course, Ray Lynn's been doing some great stuff over in IWC. And actually, I think I just saw she was doing some Women of Honor stuff. If she was the one I was following on that. Both her and Dylan Bostic actually popping up at some Ring of Honor shows uh, over the past couple of weeks. I think around the Nashville area, too, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so really Yeah, I cool. think I saw a video of Ray Lynn getting um, beaten up by a Kelly Cott. Kai Klein. Klein, yes. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly Klein. Klein. AKA uh, Mary Elizabeth Monroe. Mm-hmm. And man, I've seen Mary Elizabeth in RWA. You guys have in- interviewed her on the show. Mm-hmm. She is a tough woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, and really, really great. It's also seen her VOW as well. Uh, so, really, really good stuff. Uh, and, and good again. Good to see uh, familiar faces, if not familiar names, in this case, <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of kind of popping up on on uh, on some of those three letter promotions. Uh, so that's really cool to see. Um, so, Eamon, you said Chikara's season finale is coming up. Um, yep. what, what's going on there? I haven't been keeping up with Chikara. There's, I mean, there's so much I can't even keep up with the TV product half the time uh, for the other shows. Definitely. No, uh, their uh, season 15 finale is coming up this weekend uh, on Saturday the 5th. Um, very excited for uh, what they're putting forward. looks like a very great card, uh, top to bottom. Uh, the, uh, being sort of uh, championed, I guess is the appropriate word, with the main event match, which is a uh, first time ever triple threat match in Chikara. Those are very rarely seen in, in the Chikara Pro world. Uh, between uh, Hollow Wicked, the current Chikara Pro Grand Champion, against the two only other former uh, Chikara Pro Grand Champions, Eddie Kingston and Icarus. Uh, they're the, not only are those three men the only ever Chikara Pro Grand Champions, they're the only remaining uh, Gen 1 originals for Chikara Pro. Uh, I, I th- it definitely is a lot going into this matchup, and, and it's, it's definitely been an interesting build. Uh, another, I guess, high-profile matchup for uh, their top banana event, I should mention, uh, is the finals of their Challenge of the Immortals tournament, which has been going uh, uh, for the entire season, uh, which is a four-on-four round-robin style kind of tournament uh, with the Wrecking Crew uh, of the Devastation Corporation and Jaka uh, taking on the, uh, the the team that was definitely the underdogs throughout the entire tournament, uh, which is the Crowning Court, which is Princess Kimberly, uh, Jervis Kylie, and Los Ice Creams, uh, definitely the... Uh, 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 started on a rocky start in the early going of the tournament, but eventually made their way up. And uh, yeah, that, that definitely should be a compelling matchup as well. Uh, the Tornado Cibernetico uh, will be happening with uh, Dasher Hatfield, who you see right there, uh, captaining a team of eight to take on uh, Juan Francisco de Coronado's team of eight. Uh, it should be some fun stuff there. Uh, Fire Ant taking on Soldier Ant and, in a battle of, of, of the uh, original colony. Uh, definitely a lot of fun stuff uh, seems to be coming through from Chikara. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, go check that out this Saturday uh, at the uh, old ECW Arena uh, in, South, in South Philadelphia. So uh, definitely some cool stuff coming from the folks at Chikara, at Chikara Pro. Awesome. And it's always great. Um, if, if you're new to Chikara, uh, one, their YouTube has a lot of stuff, so you can kind of get familiar. Like, I can't, 
I, f- I ran into this video, the t- top five moves of Princess Kimberly, for instance. Uh, mm-hmm. So you see a little bit of it in action and what's going on. And, and they do have a little bit of that WWE mod- model, uh, 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 you know, seven ninety nine nine eight nine. 99 I don't know, uh, all you could eat uh, uh, system. So you can just dive right into yeah. this in a pretty mm-hmm. affordable way. Uh, and, and, and again, just one of those groups that have just uh, done great stuff over over the uh, years. Um, and you can also check out, uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends, PowerToTheSmarks.com uh, with o- Occupy Pro Wrestling. Uh, they do a, a, a podcast over there, Chikara in 15 Minutes or Less. Uh, is their podcast so you can catch up on what's going on in the world of Chikara. Uh, they have a lot of discussion and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, interviews as well going on over there. So again, uh, uh, power to the and uh, you can check that out. So shouts to them. So anything else indie wrestling related? We really want to get into. I don't know. I've been distracted by WWE Raw in town, for instance, and, and a few other things. Uh, I, I forgot our debate was this weekend. Holy crap! <laughs> it, it, uh, it, from a light weekend and a light month of wrestling in november to oh hey uh here's all the wrestling in in december right in my face um but i'm looking forward to it. i think we got uh two weeks coming up uh really good in in, in uh in uh, pittsburgh i know Eamon, you're on your hiatus your holiday hiatus probably the smarter of all of this these wrestling promotions in this uh, uh fact <laughs> in the long run yeah we still have a month to go, but yeah, some cool stuff definitely coming in the works for us uh, going into 2016. So. Awesome, awesome. I hope everybody got good deals. I know everybody, Indie Wrestling, Smart Mark, High Spots, Indie Wrestling.us, all having black market. Black, jeez. Black, I almost said <laughs> Black market? I almost gave a shout out to my old uh, old friends, Black Market Body Parts, a uh, Pittsburgh metal band <laughs> I used to play with back in the day um, on shows. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody needs theme music, go ch- hit them up, and maybe they'll do something for you. Uh, but anyways, uh, but no, a lot of Black Friday sales and uh, hopefully a lot of Christmas sales coming up. I know we're having fun. I, I like doing. I started this last year. We did an Advent sale uh, in in the old <laughs> store, so we're doing a different title. Uh, actually, today it's probably over by now by the time you hear this. But RWA's open season, the last show we were doing for two bucks, you, you could pick it up. Uh, and there's going to be a little bit of everybody featured. Uh, so uh, again, just kind of, I, I want to give opportunities for people to sample everything, you know, uh, be it stuff on YouTube, be it like some cheap tiles, and, and, and why not with the digital downloads? And uh, we're we're continuing to work on um, interesting ways for people to do that, you know. Um, I, I think it's really important. I think it's really important that you can go to Chikara and say, oh, this is what Chikara is like, and kind of get a really good idea, and and give that little bit for free. You know, are a lot of little bits for free uh, to to compel me to drop some money, and I've gone to Chikara shows. You know, um, <laughs> you know, Ring of Honor does the same thing, and I go to Ring of Honor every time they come to town, and you know, they have me at least in that aspect, and I think that's really important, and that's how you get fans and build that audience. So, I think it's worked out uh, very well for you guys at Inspire. I think it's uh, I think it's working its way up. I see a lot of new faces picking up RWA titles every month. Even a guy in France. That's weird. <laughs> so uh and so much more so um but no uh but hey i think that's all it's fit to talk about in indie wrestling this week that i'm aware of guys uh, yeah i i agree amen you have anything i think that's all i got all right at hot wheels rwa you can see him behind the ones and twos uh this weekend at rwa's uh season beatings again uh shane douglas the uh pittsburgh legend as well as uh, uh, Sanjay Dutt, Amazing Red, and the stars and 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 ladies and gents of the uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. It's going to be a great show. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, also, fans, if you have a chance, go to rwalive.com and vote for the wrestlers of the year, the ones you hate, the ones you love, et cetera, et cetera, so they know how you really truly feel about them. If you're on the live stream, I'm going to live pick my favorites of the year and put my votes in after we end the show. Oh, oh that's, yeah. Let's do this, folks. That's Let's exclusive. Yeah, maybe I'll periscope deals. it. Maybe I'll periscope it. I don't know. Um, and also, uh, da, 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 oh, Eamon, that's the other guy on the show. And, and Eamon, too. Please <laughs> sign the Twitter. I'm sorry. It's late. Uh, InspireProWrestling.com. Yes, indeed. InspireProWrestling.com. Twitter.com. Slash InspireProWrestling. Go check us out over there. 
And of course, SogatronMedia.com is where I reside in my uh, wrestling promotions and productions and, and otherwise and technology and, 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 uh, and Pittsburgh in general. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of podcasts going on. You can follow me at Sorgatron to find out everything else going on non wrestling as well. And please support all of our friends at IndieWrestling.us, smart, SmartMarkVideo.com, and all the places. Look for uh, all our friends all around Inspire Pro Wrestling, RWI, IWC, and DOW, and everybody else. Uh, support all the indie wrestling. I don't even care if I'm not behind the lens on, on a few of them. Still support indie wrestling. That's what I'm Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.